Hello everyone, here we are going to explore steady state dynamic analysis. Steady state dynamic analysis refers to the study of a system's behavior under constant or slowly varying conditions, focusing on the system's response after it has reached a stable state. This type of analysis is commonly used in various fields including physics, engineering, economics, and environmental science. In the context of engineering and control systems, steady state dynamic analysis involves examining how a system responds to sinusoidal or periodic input signals once it has settled into a stable operating condition. And, you know, here we have an example the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents systems response such as displacement velocity or acceleration and we have a steady state region in the figure there will be a portion where the response has stabilized and is repeating Periodically, this is the steady state region, and it indicates that the system has reached a stable condition in the response of the harmonic input. And we have the amplitude of the response in the steady state region, which represents the magnitude of the system's oscillation under the influence of the harmonic input, and the frequency of the harmonic input is typically shown in the figure and the system's response frequency should match the input frequency during the steady state and this is a key characteristic of steady state behavior and finally at the beginning of time history there will be a transient region where the system is still settling and the response is changing so transient region eventually transition transitions into the steady state region ah this analysis is particularly relevant for systems that operate continuously such as electrical circuits mechanical systems and control systems and here we are going to create a part from the previous example you can watch the video of this part and here I use some tools for creating a sketch of my part okay I circle here and I must determine the dimensions I want to determine this distance has one Okay, here I must determine the extrusion type. I choose 12 as depth and I choose minus 105. And here I have my part and I want to perform the analysis using this part. Okay, the next step I must determine the property so 
first step I choose the mass density okay and then I must determine the Young's modulus and poison ratio Okay, I create section here, solid, homogeneous, and then I must assign created section. So I must select on part. Okay. Here I have applied the material to my part. Next step, I must create an assembly from my instance. And as you can see, if I don't, I cannot define a step here. So I choose this one and click on OK. Here I have my assembly from my created part. So here I can create my desired step. Here I want to perform a steady state dynamic analysis using direct method. And there is another method whose name is Ms. Model. In I will explain the differences between the two, these two approaches but here I choose the direct method in steady state dynamic analysis the lower and upper frequency limits define the range of frequencies over which the response of the system will be calculated the number of points determines the number of frequencies at which the response will be calculated within the range. And finally, the bias parameter controls the spacing of the frequencies with a higher bias value resulting in more frequencies being calculated near the natural frequencies of a system. The selection of these parameters depends on the specific application and the desired level of accuracy. In general, a wider frequency range and a larger number of points will result in a more accurate calculation of the response, but will also require more computation time. The bias parameter can be used to focus the calculation on the frequencies of interest, which can be helpful for identifying reson resonances or other important features of the response. So, yeah, I suppose everything looks good here, and I want to show a table summarizing the purpose of each parameter. Here I have a table and as you can see the first one defines the minimum frequency at which the response will be calculated and the number of points which determine the number of frequencies at which the resonance will be calculated within the specified frequency range and finally bias parameter. You must be familiar with these parameters when you are performing your analysis and choosing these parameters, as I said before, depends on your requirements and application. 
the next step, I Okay, here I check this step again. I suppose everything looks okay. And here I have my step. So here I can define my load. I will apply concentrated force on a point of my part and I, I suppose this point is suitable for this and I want my force to be toward to y axis and its amplitude is 100 newton so here I can create my job and I submit here I will face an error and it is because of some settings which must be refined so I go back to my step and here I can edit my step again okay and I suppose uh, okay in direct method this option is not necessary so I go back and again I submit my okay we forgot to create the mesh so we go back here to mesh part and I use a very simple mesh I suppose 0.51 will be okay then I apply the mesh to my part and yeah that's cool let's go back and submit our job I suppose there will be not any problem so yeah okay here my simulation has been completed so I can check it out the results here and as you can see here I have the response of my system to the concentrated force which was applied to the part and I want to plot, plot my, my results using the tools which are provided by Abacus CAE. I suppose nope. I want to plot displacements, and here you can plot specifications and features like energy, kinetic energy and the other ones and here you can choose this option in order to plot the features like displacement or velocity I suppose I choose I must choose unique nodal here and here I can 
use spatial displacement I only need magnitude and I want to plot the displacement of the node here so I click on it and done and then I click on plot so here I have the plot of displacement but the curve is weird I need some modifications from here I choose linear for my frequency changes and incrementation and here I have reasonable plot for my displacement of a specified node and as you can see here the results of direct method are very similar to the results of modal method direct and modal steady state dynamic analysis are two different methods for analyzing the response of a system to harmonic s excitation both methods are based on solving the equation of motion for a system but they differ in how they approach the solution direct method solves the the equation of motion directly in terms of the physical degrees of freedom of the system and this method is computationally expensive but it is accurate and can be used to analyze systems with nonlinear behaviors and modal state steady state dynamic analysis is a more efficient method that is based on the use of the systems eigenmodes and the eigenmodes are the natural modes of vibration of a system and they can be used to represent the response of the system to harmonic excitation modal steady state dynamic analysis is less accurate than direct steady state dynamic analysis but it is much faster and can be used to analyze linear systems and here is a is a table summarizing the key differences between direct and modal steady state dynamic analysis and as you can see the basis for solutions are different and direct method is more suitable for nonlinear systems and it's more accurate but it needs more computational sources and it's more time consuming and it depends on your application thanks for your watching